conversation when it comes to taxation. Now, while the interim budget didn't see any tax changes, industry is awaiting progress on key aspects like simplification of the capital gains regime and perhaps more sweeteners to popularize a concessional personal income tax regime in the July budget. I caught up with KPMG's global head of tax, David Linky, to discuss the global best practices on both these fronts as well as the highly contentious issue of taxation of dividends. Here's a slice from that conversation. No changes in that budget, even though it was an interim budget, I understand, is a good thing <laughs> because it gives certainty to foreign investors in terms of the, um, the deployment of foreign capital in the country. I mean, I think there still remains an issue um, with India, um, especially from the perspective of foreign investors in terms of the resolution of disputes. They take too long and I know the regulators in this country are looking at that and thinking about different ways to try and expedite that process and give greater certainty to foreign investors. How aligned are we on personal income tax with the rest of the world? Yeah. And uh, has this worked elsewhere? Zero subsidy or you know, no exemptions, but lower rates. Yeah. Uh, does it work successfully elsewhere? How can India get to it then? Yeah, I mean, look, okay. there's only a couple of examples of mm -hmm. countries which have tried to go to that more simplified system. Mm -hmm. Okay, in a sense, if you think about from the same perspective, in the major capital markets like the US or the UK, people love their deductions, yeah. okay? And they're not prepared to give them up. Mm -hmm. A few countries have looked, for example, at, well, why don't I remove all work-related expenses mm -hmm. or, you know, expenses that relate to my occupation or employment? Mm -hmm. Because that would take away, in some of those cases, 80% of the work on yeah. a return, mm -hmm. especially if you think about where technology is heading on pre-fill, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. I don't think many countries um, have gone down that path. I think it's great that India is doing it. So no precedent that perhaps India can follow? No, um, not, the, not the one that necessarily comes to mind immediately. Fair enough. I think it's it, at the end of it, for most of us, it boils down to the yeah. rate of tax. If it's yeah. competitive enough, yeah. enough to move to mm. the new simple regime, mm. then people will uh, surely switch. One thing that uh, has often been asked for is a more simplified capital gains regime. Yeah. Because in India, we have debt, debt mutual funds, uh, yeah. the tax incentives were taken away, then there are equity funds, and you know, there's property, listed shares, unlisted shares, so it's, it's fairly complex. Yeah. Uh, again, what, are, what is the global precedent, and uh, what perhaps should India consider? Yeah, I mean, look, I mean, I think um, different tax rates or different concessions on different asset classes always complicates mm -hmm. the, the capital gains tax regime. I mean, India has a particularly complicated capital gains tax environment yeah. um, and clearly there was government policy decisions made many years ago about how you'll tax particular asset classes. And that, well, that's where the question arises whether tax should be used an, as an instrument to sort of promote one asset class over the other. Well tax is always used as an instrument to pr <laughs> promote particular things. Yeah, yeah. If you think about the rest of the world tax mm -hmm. is being used to promote um, investment in renewables for example. Mm -hmm. Okay so mm -hmm. so in a sense tax mm -hmm. is often used in that way as an incentive to mm -hmm. direct capital. Yeah. But I mean what, what I would say on capital gains tax mm -hmm. is look there's an acknowledgement of two things that I should really at a conceptual level only be taxed on my real gain mm -hmm. so after inflation and secondly, I should only be taxed on, or the tax rate should acknowledge the fact that capital assets are riskier than the derivation of our employment income, for example. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so when you put those things together, I think most countries have come to the conclusion you need a concessional rate of tax on capital gains, but consistent across asset classes. Is so what there I is would consistency. Say. Yeah, there's, is, generally, the, there's generally the consistency. There's yeah. generally consistency yeah. mm -hmm. to ensure that necessarily um, you're not incentivising investment in a particular asset class. The debate around buybacks and dividends. Yes. And we yeah. keep changing policy every couple of years. Uh, the latest one is that uh, dividends are taxed in the hands of shareholders. Yes. And companies have been now resorting to buybacks yeah. when they want to mm. uh, sort of uh, you know, reward their shareholders. Mm. Uh, what do you think of all this and does it, is it in sync with the global practices that we see around? Yeah, I mean, I think, look, the taxation of dividends mm -hmm. um, has always been an interesting tax policy issue on which people have different, if, if, um, mm -hmm. different conclusions. I mean, uh, if you think about the current Indian um, environment for the taxation of dividends, if I'm a, an Indian resident, it ends up at an effective tax rate of about 51%. 
Oh and wait, how 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 fifty one well, percent? Let's break this down. I for pay twenty two percent underlying corporate profits. That's and then right. I can pay up to 37% of the dividend I receive. So if you do the maths, yeah. you end up at an effective rate of about 51%. So the company is paying tax yeah. on that income. Yeah. And then I, as a shareholder, am also paying tax on the dividend that I'm receiving. Well, you're paying, you're yeah. paying tax on the, on, yeah, on the dividend you receive after yeah. tax out of the company. Yes. yes. So, um, so look, I mean, I think there is a double tax issue, but mm -hmm. that, that's an issue that exists fairly consistently around the world. So we just okay. have to live with it. Well, it? I mean, if you think about, if you think about, it, there was a there was a debate in the U.S. for many years mm -hmm. about um, companies preferred buybacks mm -hmm. because of this this exact issue. Some com countries have tried to deal with the issue by what's called an imputation system. Okay, and, and what is and, that? And what that means yeah. is, sort of, be that you would get a credit in your own mm -hmm. tax return for the underlying twenty two cents paid at the corporate level. Ah. So you'd you'd get your okay. dividend. You'd uh -huh. pay 30, your prima facie, you'd pay 37 cents in the dollar. But I get a set off. You'd get a set off for the 22 cents paid at the underlying corporate level. Which the company's level. already... The now, the problem with that system... Sounds great, actually, frankly. Uh, the, the problem <laughs> with that system is it costs a lot of money. 